Dead America, Low Country, Part 6, written by Derek Slayton, narrated by Aaron Smith. Chapter 1 Day Zero Plus Four The sun peeked through the blinds, shining right onto Dante's face as he laid on the couch. His first instinct was to pull the covers over his head and roll over, but he quickly succumbed to the inevitability of being awake. He sat up slightly, looking around the empty room. Ever since they'd cleared out the house across the street, there was a lot more room to move about. No more cramped sleeping quarters, no more piles of sleeping bodies, although there weren't quite enough beds to go around yet. As he lamented the discomfort of the couch, he took pause and pressed his palm to his head. Be thankful you have this, he thought to himself. Grace could be sleeping on a whole lot worse. He took a deep breath, not wanting to imagine the horrors she could be going through. She might not even be sleeping at all. She's a tough girl, he thought firmly, shutting down that thought process. She'll be okay. The sound of coffee mugs clanking together perked him up, and he sat up. He slipped off of the couch and approached the kitchen, peeking in to see Lily standing in front of the coffee maker, tapping her foot impatiently. The little appliance seemed to be struggling, pumping out a tiny trickle of the black gold. She grunted in frustration as the machine sputtered. Having some issues this morning? Dante asked and she squeaked, leaping off of the ground as she whipped around to face him. She put a hand over her heart. Jesus, tap dancing Christ, Dante, she breathed. He cracked a smile, and she returned it, lowering her hand and shaking her head. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you there, he said, chuckling. Her smile widened, and she waved him off. It's okay, she said, and then turned back to the coffee maker smacking the side of it before unplugging the cord. On the plus side, I don't need this to wake up now. Ace wandered into the kitchen in just his boxes, rubbing his eyes with his fists and yawning. Well, some of us do, Lil, he groaned, scrubbing his hands down his face. Especially when they're woken up at the ass crack of dawn by a couple of knuckleheads in the kitchen, said Knucklehead shared an apologetic glance. Sorry, cuz, Lily said. Maybe they have some across the street, Dante suggested. Ace ran his hands through his hair. Well, why don't you all go check? He said thickly, stifling another yawn. I'll stay here and try to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. Well, there goes his morning, Lily quipped, and led Dante out of the kitchen away from her pasty, scantily clad cousin. There was a clear path leading from Ace's front door to the house across the street. On either side of the yard was a stretch of cars and other debris, creating a makeshift barricade. It wasn't much, and wouldn't protect them from a horde of any significant size, but it would buy them a bit of time, should problems arise. At least, problems with the undead. As they walked towards the other house, they spotted Cam and Philip standing guard, looking down the street towards the gas station only occasionally looking back in the other direction. Come on, man, Jason Voorhees is way more of a bad guy than Michael Myers, Cam was saying, and the argument already sounded heated, as if it had been going on for a while. He's got a higher body count and is more indiscriminate with his kills. Philip threw his hands up. Michael Myers killed his teenage sister. So? Cam scoffed. Jason has killed enough teenagers to fill a high school football stadium. Philip cocked his head. Yeah? He asked, and then pointed a finger at his partner. Well, Michael spent an entire movie trying to kill his ten-year-old niece. Jason never tried to kill kids. Now did he? Part six, Cam shot back. He broke into the bunks and scared those kids. Philip shook his head. But he didn't try to kill them. Now did he? He asked. His friend thought for a moment, his excitement fading. But then his eyes widened as another thought dawned on him. Oh, oh, oh! He exclaimed. But in that Nintendo game, 
He totally killed the kids. Really? Philip rolled his eyes. We're bringing video games into this now? Cam sneered. You're just mad because you lost the debate, he accused. Two things, his friend said flatly, holding up his pointer and middle fingers. One, the kids die off screen, so it doesn't count. Two, Michael Myers actually kills a kid on screen in his game. Cam scowled. When the hell was there a Halloween video game? He demanded. Atari 2600, my friend, Philip declared, puffing out his chest. His companion rolled his eyes. Oh, yeah. The system with games featuring square tanks, square bullets, and square circles, he drawled, sarcasm heavy in his tone. I'm sure the deaths were all kinds of realistic. Had blood and everything, Philip argued. So realistic enough to piss off parents back in the day. Cam shook his head emphatically. Man, how in the hell do you know so much about the ancient times? He asked. Well, you never know when you might have to converse with someone who is ancient, his friend explained with a laugh. Morning, guys, Dante said as they reached them. Sounds like you have a hell of a debate going on there. Case in point? Philip asked, jerking a thumb towards Dante. The boys chuckled the two newcomers shaking their heads in confusion. Come on, let's leave Beavis and Butthead here to do their thing, Lily said, rolling her eyes. Philip held up a hand. No, no, wait, he said. We could actually use your help. Okay, shoot, Dante replied, crossing his arms. Well, we're trying to say who the most evil villain in film history is, Cam explained. I say it's Jason Voorhees, and he says it's Michael Myers. Philip nodded. So, who do you think it is? Dante contemplated for a moment and glanced over at Lily, who shot him an amused smirk and playfully motioned for him to share his thoughts. Well, as fate would have it, Dante began, I actually know a little about this topic. Out of the two, I would have to say Michael Myers is the more evil of the two. Boom! Philip cried, raising both his hands in a faux explosion. Cam gaped at him, shaking his head. How, man? he blurted. Jason has a much higher body count than Michael does. It's not about the number of kills, Dante replied, but where he killed them. The younger man raised an eyebrow. I don't follow. Of course you don't, Lily drawled, because you're an idiot. I mean, it's pretty simple when you think about it, really, Dante continued. Crystal Lake is his home, and outside of killing Alice at the beginning of the second movie, pretty much every single one of his kills has been people who came to Crystal Lake, or, in his mind, people who were invading his home. Granted, that case isn't as airtight as, say, Leatherface's, but it excuses a lot of the murders when compared with Michael, who just hunts and kills all over town. The boys looked at each other and shrugged, finally nodding at the answer. What are y'all talking about? Ace asked as he sauntered up behind them, finally fully clothed. Dante chuckled. They were having a debate on who the most evil movie character was, he explained. Oh yeah? Ace asked. Who won? Philip puffed out his chest. My pick, Michael Myers, he declared. Eh, not a bad choice, Ace said tilting his head back and forth. A hundred percent wrong, but not a bad choice. The younger man raised an eyebrow. Oh, yeah? He challenged. Who is your pick? Oh, that's easy, Ace drawled. It's Jenny from Forrest Gump. Everyone froze and stared at him with blank expressions. I'm almost afraid to ask, Lily said slowly, closing her eyes. But why is Jenny the biggest movie villain? Ace balked at her. Are you serious? He asked. She raped a mental midget who she knew was in love with her, completely abandoned him afterwards, then showed back up years later to dump an AIDS baby in his lap and then took advantage of him yet again, so she'd have someone to take care of her as she died. He took a breath, having spouted all the information without breathing. That's way more evil than a few dumb, sex-crazed teenagers meeting the business end of a machete. 
Lily face-palmed so hard she was sure she'd given herself a minor concussion. The rest of the group was speechless. Based on your reactions, Ace drawled, I'd say I won that round. His cousin sighed. More like you killed so many of our brain cells that we lack the ability to respond, she said. Before he shares more film history thoughts, Dante cut in. Do you boys have any coffee? They shook their heads in tandem. Only thing they had in the house was decaf, Cam replied. Lily grimaced. Now that's evil, she said. Come on, we'll get some at the gas station, Ace suggested. Need to fill up that dirt bike with gas anyway. His cousin furrowed her brow. When did you get a dirt bike? she asked. Found it yesterday, going through that last house's garage, he explained, jerking a thumb over his shoulder. Doesn't look like it's been run in a while, so I need to put it through its paces so it doesn't break down. If you want to grab that, Dante said, I'll grab my handgun and we'll start walking. Ace nodded. Yeah, good call, he agreed. Grab my knife if you don't mind. Can't be too careful these days. As the trio headed off, Cam stepped forward. Hey, will you bring us back a cup too? he asked. Dante paused, glancing over his shoulder. How do you take it? Cam smirked. I take my coffee like I take my women, he said, waggling his eyebrows. Then you already have it, since the only women you take are imaginary, Lily quipped. He opened his mouth, but then just hung his head, prompting laughter from everyone, especially Philip, who bumped his shoulder in his mirth. The trio walked up the street. Dante and Lily up ahead as Ace pushed his shiny new dirt bike a few yards behind them. They walked quietly, just enjoying the peacefulness of the morning. Dante glanced over at Lily, unable to keep his eyes off of her, and she side-glanced him back, the two blushing a bit and immediately averting their eyes. Ace saw the exchange and rolled his eyes, speeding up to a jog to catch up to them. It's the apocalypse. This ain't the time to slow play it, he quipped. Both of them started to argue as he jogged by them, pushing the bike, but clamped their mouths shut to avoid further embarrassment. He looked back over his shoulder as he jogged ahead. You know I'm right, he called in a sing-song voice. Which is why neither of you are saying anything. Now, would one of you make your damn move already, so we can get on with our day? He turned his back to them and rushed off towards the gas station. When he was out of earshot, Dante scratched the back of his head nervously. I, uh, I know it's only been a few days since we met, he began, avoiding looking at her. But I do kind of like you. She chuckled, unable to hold in her smile. I know it's only been a few days, she echoed. But I kind of like you too. He smiled down at her reaching out and grabbing her hand, and she laced her fingers into his. They walked along, enjoying the human contact and the peaceful morning for a few moments. Just so you know, Dante finally said playfully, I don't put out on the first date. Lily winked. Just so you know, she replied. I do. They shared a laugh and were still chuckling when they reached the gas station. Ace spotted them from his perch next to the bike, the gas pump firmly lodged in the tank. Well, it's about damn time, he drawled, throwing his hand up dramatically. I'll get the coffee going, Lily said, shooting Dante a smile as she pulled away from him, lingering her fingers on his as long as possible before letting go. He watched her sachet off into the gas station and took a deep breath. Some solid wingman work there he commended as he stepped closer to Ace. Well, one of us needs to be decisive, the redneck quipped and finished topping off the tank, replacing the nozzle on the pump. You know anything about dirt bikes? he asked. Dante shook his head. Not really, he admitted. Wasn't great with machines growing up. My father was a graphic designer, so there wasn't any of that learning at my father's knee stuff as he fixed the car. Now, if you need me to drive it down to the mechanic to have the oil changed, I can handle that for you. Ace laughed as he pushed the bike towards the store. Well, come on. 
I'll give you a quick run-through on this bad boy, so you'll at least know what the working parts are. He held up a finger. Now, just so we're clear, Lily's my cousin, so I can't show you how that works. Dante barked a laugh. Don't worry, he said. I've got that one covered. Believe it or not, I didn't always look this pretty. He motioned to his face. Ace stopped short, brow furrowing, face a rare expression of seriousness. Hey, man, you know Lily don't care about that, he said. I mean, hell, you met Maddox, so it's pretty obvious she ain't about looks. Dante chuckled and patted his friend on the back. Come on, let's check out this bike. Chapter 2 The bike stood on its kickstand by the front counter. Ace knelt down on one knee, pointing out some things on the engine as Dante looked over his shoulder. He nodded along with everything the redneck said, intently focused on it, even though much of what he was saying went over his head. Coffee's on, boys, Lily declared, and both men looked up as she held out two tall cups of liquid gold. Savor it, because in another week or so we're going to be out of the light roast, she added, as they both nodded and thanked her for the brew. Looks like we have something to add to the shopping list, Ace said. Dante raised his eyebrow. You mean it wasn't already? he asked. They chuckled before turning back to their engine lesson, sipping the steaming brew. Lily walked back to the coffee maker, pouring herself a nice tall cup, mixing in a couple packets of the powdered creamer. She took a deep sniff of it, enjoying the steamy scent of fresh brew. She walked over to the front door, enjoying the peace and quiet as the sun crested the horizon. The view from the front window of the store wasn't too impressive, at least on a normal day. But with the sun creeping up over the trees in the distance, and no flesh-eating monsters in sight, it was beautiful enough for her to enjoy it. The beauty was short-lived, however. Lily froze at the sight of two large SUVs in the distance. She opened her mouth, but her voice came out in a quiet squeak. Dante, she rasped and then finally found her voice. Dante! The boys raced over to her, concerned. What is it? he asked. She motioned to the vehicles. Down the road, she gushed. They squinted and quickly realized that the SUVs were similar to the ones QXR had on the marine base when they were there a few days ago. Fuck, man. How in the hell did they find us? Ace breathed, pressing his hand to his forehead. Dante shook his head. I don't think they have found us, he replied. Or they don't know that they have. Look. The trio watched as the vehicle stopped a hundred yards away at the first set of houses on either side of the road. Eight men got out standing around for a moment before seven of them headed off to investigate various houses. They're just doing a sweep, Lily said, relief in her tone. Ace nodded. Well, let's get the fuck out of here, he said. How? she asked, shaking her head. As soon as we start up the truck, they're going to be on us. We don't have the firepower to take them on. Her cousin crossed his arms. Well, what do you propose? We gotta pull them away from here, Dante cut in firmly. What? Both cousins exclaimed at the same time. He held up his hands. If we don't pull them away, they'll just follow us down to the school, he explained. Ace swallowed hard as the insinuation sunk in. The last thing they needed was QXR finding their farming operation. Well, how in the hell are we going to do that? he asked. Dante motioned to the dirt bike. Ace shook his head. You want to outrun a bunch of mercs on a dirt bike? he demanded. And go where? We head back towards the prison where we broke Francis out, Dante explained. Lose him in the town and hightail it back down south. We? Ace asked, raising an eyebrow. Dante nodded. Yeah, we, he confirmed. I'm assuming you know how to drive that thing? Been riding since I was four, the redneck replied proudly. You good enough to have a passenger on the back? Dante asked. Ace smirked. You saying you want to ride, bitch? he asked. The taller man drew his handgun. I'm saying I want to do a drive-by, and I need you to drive, he replied. You think you can handle it? Let's do it. Ace agreed. 
As soon as you get clear, I'll get everybody to safety, Lily cut in. Dante nodded. Thanks, he said. And Dante, she added, and when he looked over she grabbed the front of his shirt and pulled him in for a searing kiss that left him light-headed. When she pulled away, she smirked up at him. We've been a couple for all of ten minutes now, she said. Don't go making me single again, you hear? He brushed a stray hair from her face. I'll see you for dinner, hon, he promised. He broke away from her and headed over to the bike, where Ace was already sitting in the seat. The redneck patted the seat behind him. Hop on there, cowboy, he drawled. You about to get way closer to me than you ever wanted to. Dante got on, and Ace flicked the switches on the handles. He readied himself to kickstart it, and then glanced over at his cousin. As soon as I get this thing fired up, you push open that door and then stay out of sight, he instructed. You got it? Lily nodded and got into position as the boys got situated on the bike. Dante gripped the gun tightly in his hand, psyching himself up to strike. You hit that throttle and never let up on it, he said. Doesn't matter if I hit them or not. We just need them to follow. Ace chuckled. Well, there's eight of them and we have one handgun, he drawled. So if you could hit at least one of them, that would help us out. I'll do my best, Dante replied. Hold on to your ass, Ace declared, and then hit the kickstart. As soon as the engine roared to life, he slammed the accelerator and picked up speed, bursting out of the gas station as Lily pushed open the door. They tore out of the parking lot and onto the road, racing towards the two SUVs. The one remaining mercenary guard who was relaxing against the driver's side door of the front vehicle perked up at the noise. He walked around in front of the hood, clutching his assault rifle, trying to get his bearings on the noise. When the dirt bike came into view, he raised his gun. Contact! Contact! he screamed, and took aim. Dante aimed over Ace's shoulder and fired, his bullet missing and punching through the windshield of the vehicle. It had the intended effect, and the mercenary dropped to one knee, giving them another second to fire again. The second bullet hit the guard in the throat, and he fell to the ground, gripping his neck as he rolled back and forth, gasping for air. The bike blew past the vehicles as the other mercenaries poured out into the road, firing wildly after the duo. Ace didn't let up despite the bullets whizzing by them, keeping up his speed and putting distance between them. Luckily, they were moving fast enough that the retaliatory shots missed them by enough of a safe margin. Dante glanced back and saw the guards leaping into their vehicles, slamming the doors and spinning the SUVs around to give chase. Did it work? Ace yelled. Yeah, and you need to get a move on, Dante yelled back. He looked over his shoulder again, keeping watch as the vehicles gained speed, slowly but surely closing the gap. He started to worry as they came within fifty yards and mercenaries began to hang out of the windows, rifles in hand. We need a turn off, Dante cried. Interstate is another mile up, Ace called back. Dante looked forward, noting the SUV is only forty yards behind now. We don't have that long, he warned. Fuck! Hold on, Ace bellowed, and veered to the left, nearly toppling them right off with the sharp turn. They bumbled through a shallow ditch, getting settled in the grass, and then gaining traction up the other side to hit a small dirt road through the countryside. Ace rose back up to top speed as the tires gripped the dirt, and Dante looked back over his shoulder again. The SUVs spun out for a moment in the ditch, before gaining traction, giving them a chance to gain more distance again. How we looking? Ace asked. Bought us a few seconds, but that's it, Dante replied. Damn it, the redneck barked. They raced down the dirt road as the SUV started gaining again. They could hear the faint sound of rifle rounds firing, even over the high-pitched whine of the engine. There was another dirt road a few hundred yards up on the right. Both men kept their heads down as bullets whizzed by them, hoping to make it to the turnoff in time. Dante looked back and the vehicles were gaining again, so he aimed and fired his gun as best he could on the bumpy terrain. The bullets pinged off of the front end of the lead SUV, 
causing no damage, but forcing the gunman to duck back inside for cover. Ace made another dramatic turn, nearly losing it on the loose gravel, but correcting at the right second and managing to keep them upright. As soon as they made the turn, they nearly crashed into a cow, but he managed to deftly swing around it. Up the road a bit, a fence portion had broken loose, allowing for dozens of cattle to escape their enclosure. They dotted the road, most of them off to the side to feast on the grass, but several in the road. Ace wove in and out between them, putting them at a safer distance from the pursuing vehicles. Dante turned and looked, watching the SUV swerve and smack into a cow knocking it down and denting their hood in the process. It slowed them down a bit, but they were still managing to cut a path through the obstacle course. This helps, but now what? Dante asked. We're still miles from Ridgeland. I got an idea, but you're not going to like it, Ace called back. His passenger took a deep breath. Seems to be the way the day is going, he muttered. Do it! Ace sped up again keeping the distance but not getting so far ahead that the SUVs wouldn't be able to see them. The whole point was to lure them away, so if they lost them, they might head back to the gas station and spot Lily's escape with the others. At the end of the dirt road, they hit a paved two-lane road. Across the street there was a sign to the left reading, Ridgeland, three miles. A small orange and white sign sat beside it, pointing to the right that said, Detour. Ace? Dante asked, voice sceptical. The redneck shook his head. Told you that you weren't going to like it, he drawled. Dante held on tight to his friend's waist as Ace made the turn and picked up speed again. He glanced over his shoulder, though stayed low, and spotted the SUVs gaining rapidly on the pavement. They raced towards Ridgeland, a long country road with vast fields on either side. Less than a mile up ahead, there was some major construction equipment blocking their path. Bullets started flying again as they reached the construction zone. Ace pushed the bike as fast as it could go, narrowly avoiding one of the big machines as he darted in between them. Dante looked back, seeing the vehicles slowing down in order to weave their way through the large machines. Even with the obstacles in the road, they remained close enough to keep the bike in view. The construction zone ran for a solid mile, with a lot of roadworks being done. Giant dirt and gravel piles dotted the area, work half-finished and not completed due to the end of the world. Ace slowed down near the end of it, making sure that their pursuers wouldn't give up on them. Two miles for into Ridgeland, Dante said. Do you think we can make it? This thing has enough juice to get us there, Ace replied, but I have no idea what we're going to do once we're there. Find some zombies and head towards them. Dante said. The redneck froze. Are you out of your fucking mind? He cried. You want me to go towards those things? I have seven shots left, and somehow I doubt I'm going to be able to go seven for seven on headshots against these guys. Dante explained. We need them to get off our tail once we get there, so unless you got a better idea... Yeah, yeah, Ace drawled, though he didn't sound happy about it. I hear ya. He shook his head as he revved the engine. They looked back and saw the vehicles getting close enough to them, so they took off. As they moved, the gunmen began firing again, narrowly missing them as they picked up speed. The road was mostly straight, allowing them to remain within sight of the mercenaries, which were quickly gaining once again. They were able to put enough distance between them to reach the town before lethal firing range, however. Ace sped down the main road through town looking frantically for a horde of zombies. Finally, on the third cross street, he spotted a pack of a few hundred at the far end of the next block. He screeched around the turn and accelerated towards the hungry ghouls. Hang on, he cried, and Dante braced himself as they reached thirty yards away from the mass of rotting flesh. When they first started, it had appeared as though they had a path to roll through them, but the engine noise attracted more ghouls, closing that off. Ace slammed on the brakes about twenty yards from the horde. We ain't getting through that, he yelled. Dante looked back just as the SUVs made the turn towards them. He frantically looked around the store-lined road, 
One long building on each side with different shops sectioned off from one another. Clothing store, go, he urged, motioning wildly. The duo leapt from the bike, leaving it to crash to the ground as they raced towards the store on foot. Gunfire from the mercenaries peppered the road, bullets whizzing by their heads and hitting the zombies that were now trying to converge on them. Dante raised his gun and fired a few times, shattering the front window of the store. They leapt through the opening as the SUVs pulled up outside, the seven pissed-off mercenaries bustling out. You two, buy us some time, one of them barked, and two of the men broke off and set up a firing line, popping zombies in the head as they got close. Most of the ghouls seemed to be moving slower than normal, but still at a dangerous clip. They concentrated their fire on the fastest moving ones. Cover in the rear, the leader continued, pointing at a lone soldier. Rest of you, push in. Ace and Dante reached the back of the store, hiding behind the cash register. They could barely hear what the leader was saying at that point, but they heard enough to know they were in trouble. What now? Ace whispered. Dante looked around. We gotta get out the back, he replied quietly. Ace nodded, and they stayed low, creeping towards the back door as quietly as possible. At the sound of boots on broken glass, they knew the mercenaries were entering the store and they reached the end of the counter, stopping at a gap of five yards of open space between their cover and the door. I'm going to fire, Dante murmured, and when I do, you run like hell. Ace nodded and readied himself. Dante took a deep breath and then popped up over the counter, just enough to catch a glimpse of his enemies. He pulled the trigger rapidly, firing off three shots in quick succession. One of the bullets managed to hit a mercenary in the vest, sending him tumbling to the ground. The other three next to him adjusted their aim and opened fire, sending three round bursts towards the direction of the gunfire. As soon as Dante pulled the trigger, Ace darted out from cover, racing to the back storage room. He smashed through it and slid inside, leaving it open for Dante, who was right behind him. Bullets peppered the wall, sending shards of wood and mannequins flying everywhere. Dante dove headfirst, sliding along the floor until he reached the door. Ace reached out and pulled him in before slamming the door shut. Bullets shredded the cheap wood and continued to fly through the wall as they rapidly crawled across the back door. Go! Dante hissed. I'll buy us a second. Ace scrambled to his feet, racing towards the back door a few yards from him. Dante rolled over onto his back, firing the remaining three shots from his handgun blindly through the door, hoping to hit something. The gunfire stopped for a second, assumedly so the mercenaries could take cover. Ace burst out the door, and a mercenary in the alley grabbed him by the throat and shoved him against the brick wall of the adjacent building. Got you, motherfucker, the beast of a man snarled, squeezing the redneck's throat tightly. Ace thrashed about, flailing his arms in a vain attempt to break free. Dante burst out of the door, lowering his shoulder and crashing into the mercenary's back. The impact sent the large man hurdling face first into the wall, smashing his nose into the brick and allowing Ace to wriggle free. Dante didn't let up, not wanting his enemy to regain any composure immediately going on the attack. He delivered a few forceful strikes to the side of the large warrior's head, stunning him. The mercenary whipped around and threw a hook that Dante was able to block, though he stumbled to the side a few steps. As they fought, Ace gasped for air, finally regaining his breath. He leapt to his feet and slammed the large metal door shut, throwing the thick latch down to lock it from the outside. There was a place for a padlock, but no lock to be found so he snatched a chunk of metal from the ground and shoved it through the loop to reinforce it. Dante exchanged blows with the large mercenary, finally landing one on the man's nose, shattering it and sending blood down his face. The man staggered back, rage in his eyes. I'm gonna rip the pretty side of your face clean off, motherfucker, he snarled. You're welcome to try, Dante replied with a smirk. His opponent let out a grunt and lunged forward, throwing a forceful straight punch. Dante ducked to the side and managed to catch his wrist, pulling it and using the momentum to fling him into the wall. As soon as he hit, Dante shoved his forearm into the back of the guy's neck, wrenching his arm behind his back. 
Ace darted forward with his pocket knife, rushing over and stabbing the mercenary in the side like a prisoner, shanking a rival, in short, fast strikes. Their opponent screamed in pain, bracing his foot against the wall and shoving back. His weight was too much for Dante, and he staggered backwards onto his ass. The mercenary drew his handgun and turned towards the fallen man, holding his side with his free hand. Before he could aim, Ace leapt onto his back, stabbing him in the throat. The mercenary threw an elbow, hitting the redneck in the side of the head and sending him to the ground. The knife stuck straight out of his neck, blood pouring out around the blade. He put one hand to the wound and raised his gun towards Ace, who reached out and grabbed his wrist, forcing the gun high. The bullets just missed the redneck's head, and in the confusion, Dante rushed forward and gave the hilt of the pocket knife a forceful palm strike, driving it deep into the mercenary's throat. Blood spurted everywhere, and the large man staggered back, firing one more shot before collapsing to the ground. The back door of the store began to shake violently as the men inside struggled to break out. We gotta get out of here, Dante said. Ace grabbed the fallen man's handgun and shoved it in the waistband of his pants before grabbing the assault rifle and trying to get it off. It was clipped to the man's vest, however, and he couldn't disengage it. Leave it, Dante barked, spotting a few zombies heading towards them from one end of the alley. He started moving in that direction, and Ace stood up, eyes wide. Where the hell are you going? he blurted. We still need cover, his companion replied, waving for him to follow. They broke out into a sprint, pumping their legs hard and Dante psyched himself up as he neared the trio of zombies in the mouth of the alley. He smacked into the first one, a smaller teenage ghoul, and picked it up by the shirt and belt, driving it back into the others. His momentum and added weight allowed him to push through to the open road. He tossed the corpse on top of the others, looking both ways quickly. To the left was mostly clear road, and to the right was the back end of the horde that was headed towards the still-firing mercenaries. A handful of creatures turned and spotted them, moving their way. Come on, we have to get a few more blocks away, Dante urged. The duo tore as hard as they could away from the horde, and due to the slower gait of the zombies, they were able to pull away. They made it up a block before cutting over, darting past ghouls as they went none of which posed a significant threat to them. Finally, after getting halfway across town, they ducked inside a store that had an open front door. They quickly swept the room, finding that it was empty before they ducked down behind the counter to regroup. Well, that was a whole lot of fun, Ace huffed, sarcastic even through his exhaustion. Can't wait to do that again, Dante shook his head. That's good. Because we're not out of this yet, he said. Pretty sure we bought Lily and the others enough time, don't you? The redneck asked. His companion nodded. Yeah, but we still have to get out of here without them seeing us, he replied. And at the moment, we don't have a vehicle. There are some neighborhoods nearby, Ace said, waving a hand above his head. We can try and find us right there. Dante shook his head. Would take too much time, he said. Even if we find a car, we'd have to find the keys to it, and there's no guarantee they're going to be in the house. So, what the hell you want to do? Ace asked, letting out a deep breath. Dante contemplated for a moment, and then finally shook his head again. Well, I got an idea, he said, and smirked before repeating Ace's words back to him. But you aren't going to like it. Chapter 3 You gotta be fucking shitting me, dude, Ace blurted, staring wide-eyed at the police station across the street. They knelt under cover, staying out of sight just in case the QXR guys came rolling by. Look at the parking lot, Dante said quietly. Plenty of police cars, and chances are they're going to have the keys locked up in there. Plus, they might have some weapons, which we could really use right now. Ace scrubbed his hands down his face. Yeah, all right, he finally agreed. Let's get this over with. They looked both ways and then broke from cover, 
rushing across the street to the station. They paused at the front, looking through the swinging doors that were unlocked. There were some dried bloodstains on the window. I don't remember that from before, Ace muttered. Dante chewed his lip. Me either, he agreed. They slipped inside, on guard in case of an attack. They reached the front lobby before working their way back to the control room, just off of the main area. Dante checked the monitors, seeing the cells where Brandt and the other officer had been locked up. Dante shook his head at the sight of a dozen zombies crowded around it. Didn't take those things very long to find them, Dante muttered. Good, that son of a bitch deserves to feel scared, Ace declared. Dante looked over the monitors, checking all of the hallways and finding them clear, with all the zombie activity in the back cell area. You have any idea where the weapon lockup is? he asked. Ace shook his head before looking on the wall by the desk. There was a printout of a map on the building, though there wasn't a listing for an armory. Gotta be the supply room, don't it? the redneck asked, tapping his finger over the listing for a supply room. Even if it isn't, can't hurt to check it out, Dante replied with a shrug. Come on. They headed down the hallway towards the storage room, taking special care at every intersection and office door to make sure there weren't any stragglers hanging about. Finally, they made it to the back hallway that led to the storage area, finding one lone zombie lingering towards the back. Not wanting the noise of firing a gun, Dante looked around, spotting a fire extinguisher on the wall. He removed it from the moorings and readied it, and he and Ace shared a nod before creeping forward. The zombie was transfixed on its reflection in the storage room glass, occasionally attacking it like a confused cat when it moved. The duo moved quietly and were able to get right close to it without the ghoul knowing they were there. Dante smacked it in the side of the head with the extinguisher, sending it to the ground in a heap. He slammed the heavy unit down into its head a few more times, just to be sure. As he did so, Ace kept his gun aimed, watching down the hallway just to make sure they didn't attract any attention. Nothing appeared, and he relaxed. We're good, he said, lowering his gun. Dante nodded, setting down the extinguisher. Then let's get our stuff and get on our way, he said, and reached for the door handle. He pushed it down and pulled, but the door was locked. He tried a few more times and then grunted in frustration when he realized there was an electronic keypad next to the door. Damn, he said. Ace grinned and knocked on the glass panel of the door. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure we can get in, he said. Dante shook his head. You can try, but I doubt it, he replied. Ace smirked as he picked up the bloody fire extinguisher. He readied it before slamming the big red metal container into the glass. It reverberated up his arms, and he poured every bit of power he had into it. He smacked it a few more times before stopping, bewildered. Well, shit, he muttered. Dante pressed his face against the glass, straining to see what was inside. The light was off, but there was a small skylight at the top of the wall, illuminating the room just enough to show off some SWAT-type equipment. Looks like it's the room we need, he said, which explains why that glass is going to be unbreakable with what we have. Ace sighed. Well, what the fuck are we gonna do then? he asked. Dante took a deep breath and then fixed the redneck with a look that spoke volumes. That look said, I'm sorry, and we don't have a choice. Ace groaned, shoulder slumping. God damn it. We gotta go save that asshole Brandt, don't we? He whined. If anybody is going to know how to get in there, it's going to be him, Dante said. Well, I've already lost my new dirt bike, so this is par for the course today, Ace grumbled. Come on, let's do it. The duo headed down the hallway towards the cells and paused at the supply room doors where they'd been ambushed by Brandt and his men a few days prior. Dante headed into one, rummaging around for anything that could be useful against an army of zombies. Nothing in the room was going to help them out in any significant way, as it was all office-type stuff. Well, maybe we could paper-cut them to death, Ace joked, picking up a stack of printer paper. Dante didn't respond, 
still looking around and spotting a wooden-handled mop in the corner. He walked over to it and gave it a forceful kick, snapping it in two. He tossed the new spear over to Ace. You think you can take those things out with that? he asked. The redneck inspected it for a moment before nodding. Yeah, maybe one, before they tackle me. Dante headed back to the corner and broke two more handles, tossing them over as well. Ace rolled his eyes after catching them all. Great, now I can kill one of them three times before I get tackled, he drawled. Dante patted him on the shoulder as he passed by. You aren't going to have to worry about that, he said, and leaned over to grab the dead officer from the center of the hall, dragging him along. No, that's not concerning at all, Ace muttered, confused as he followed. Dante led them down the hallway to where the cells were, stopping at the door leading towards them. He got a good grip on the corpse and lifted it up, pressing it against the door before letting out a yell. The zombies by the cell mostly broke away, rushing for Dante. They hit the corpse hard, but he was able to hold them in place. Ace gaped at the scene, and his companion grunted, inclining his head towards him. Start stabbing, Dante barked. The redneck shook himself back into the moment and started attacking. He aimed and thrusted one of the spears into an eye socket, dropping the ghoul to the ground. Before he could ready another strike, another zombie was there. He stabbed again, but missed badly, taking the ear off of one of the creatures. Another managed to smack the weapon away, forcing him to grab another one. This time, his aim was on target, dropping another. But the spike lodged itself in its skull. Shit, I'm down a one, Ace cried. Dante struggled to hold the zombies back, taking a deep breath. Well, make it count, he instructed through his teeth. Ace struck a couple more times, taking out two but losing the weapon on the next strike. There were still five zombies trying to force their way past Dante. Shit, the redneck exclaimed and hesitated, trying to think of what to do next. Finally, he pulled out his gun, looking to his companion for guidance. Dante gave him a nod, ducking his head. Ace cocked the hammer back and aimed, pulling the trigger only when he was confident of a kill shot. He repeated this multiple times, until the threat had been neutralized. His partner finally dropped the officer corpse, stretching his shoulders to relieve some of the fatigue. As he did, Ace walked into the room and stepped over to the last remaining ghouls still trying to get into the jail cell. He executed them both at point-blank range finally getting rid of the threat altogether. The duo stood outside of the jail cell, seeing both Brandt and his officer stretched out by the back, sitting on the mattress for a bit of cushion. Well, well, the sheriff drawled. I was wondering when one of you boys would wise up and come get us, Ace sneered. Sorry to disappoint you there, chief, he said, but we're just here for some supplies. Somehow, I doubt that, Brandt said with a smirk. The redneck shrugged. Doubt it all you want, Bubba. The sheriff shook his head and stood up, walking over to the bars close to the men. Nah, if you were here for supplies, you would have just taken them and ran, he said, and then paused for a moment, thinking. Oh, you're not here for supplies. You're here for supplies, he barked a laugh. Had a little trouble getting into the room, did you? I'm guessing you know how to get us into that room, Dante asked, crossing his arms. Grant nodded. Oh, that's for sure, but it's going to cost you, he replied. Why does that not surprise me, Dante asked, rolling his eyes. The sheriff crossed his arms, leaning casually on the bars. Well, for starters, you're going to get me and my friend Officer Henson here out of this hellhole, he said. You know how to pick a lock? Ace asked with a shrug. Because we don't have keys. Brandt pointed to the cell across the way from them. If there's something in the toilet, you can blame your idiot friend Maddox, he drawled. He's the one who tossed it in there. Ace and Dante looked at each other, and without saying a word, they both extended their fists and launched into an immediate game of rock-paper-scissors. Ace threw rock, and Dante threw paper. Damn, 
the redneck cried. Best two out of three? he asked, hopefully. Dante raised his hands. I think I'm good, man, he replied. Ace hung his head before heading into the cell and looking down into the toilet. He let out a deep sigh of relief when he saw only water, or at least what he hoped was water, and reached in. He felt around in the pipe and plucked the keys, shaking them dry before tossing them over to his companion. Dante caught them, wrinkling his nose when he felt they were still wet. Thanks for that, he said. My pleasure, Ace replied with a grin. Dante turned to Brent, who stood on the other side of the bars, putting on a stoic face. Here's the deal, Dante said, pointing at him. I'm going to let you out of here. You're going to get us into the supply room, and we're both going to take what we need and then go our separate ways. The sheriff shook his head. Sorry, but I'm going to need more than that. Afraid we don't have much else to give at this point, Dante replied. Oh, you do. Brant said with a sneer. You're going to tell me where Maddox is. Ace stalked towards the cell, fists clenched. Fuck you, man, he snarled. Dante held up his palm to calm down his friend. Sorry, Sheriff, but we have enough people trying to kill us without adding you to the mix, he said. You boys out there making friends, I see, Brant said tightly. Something like that, Dante replied. So that's off the table. However, I'm willing to honor the deal I offered you. The sheriff contemplated for a moment, and then glanced back at Henson, who looked gaunt and a little worse for wear. He gave his superior a weak thumbs up. Okay, Brandt said with a smile. You have a deal. Chapter 4 So... Why did you come back here for all this shit anyway? Brandt asked as they headed down the hallway to the supply room. Dante and Ace, walking behind the officers, shared a glance. They're gonna find out anyway, the redneck said. Dante sighed. QXR group is in town, he replied. We led them here to keep them away from where we are holed up, and they're combing the town for us. We're probably going to have to fight our way out. The sheriff wrinkled his nose, whirling on them and stopping short. QXI? Those bad boys are after you? He smirked. Before you even think about it, Dante said, pointing a finger at him, they're not going to care whether you give us up or not. They'll just kill all four of us, put us down like dogs. Brandt pursed his lips. He ain't joking, Ace added. If you want to walk out there with your hands up and offer yourself to them, go for it, because I would be happy to see him make you in a Swiss cheese. Henson paled even further than he already was. I don't want to get mixed up with those guys, he said hoarsely. You either help us get out of town, or you die, Dante said with a shrug. It's not a threat, it's just the facts. The sheriff grunted and turned back towards the supply room, leading them down the hall. When he reached the keypad, he typed in the code quickly, and the light on the top went green. When he reached for the handle, Ace smacked his hand away. Yeah, I don't think so. We're getting suited up first, the redneck declared. Brandt clucked his tongue and stepped back, leaning against the wall with Henson as Ace rummaged around in the storage room. He tossed out a vest and a shotgun to Dante, and he geared himself up. Can we trust you? Ace asked, as he handed some vests out the door to the sheriff, and he rolled his eyes. I'm here, aren't I? He drawled. You don't trust my word, so you're going to have to decide for yourself. The redneck clenched his jaw and handed over two shotguns, glaring daggers at him in warning. How do I know I can trust you? Brandt shot back as he strapped on the vest. What if your QXR story is bullshit? Ace rolled his eyes. If it was, we wouldn't have given you any weapons or gear. Your asses would be going right back in that cell, he said, and held up a hand. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't even be here, so I think you can trust that. Henson took in a ragged breath as he donned his vest. Do you guys have any food? 
he asked hoarsely. Dante cocked a brow and pulled a granola bar out of his pocket, tossing it over. Brandt glanced at Ace, but the redneck shook his head. Hell no. Mine is chocolate covered. I ain't sharing shit, he drawled. Henson broke his in half and handed it to the sheriff, and he wrinkled his nose as he looked it over, then stuffed it into his mouth. Let's get this over with, he mumbled through a mouthful of oats, and pushed off of the wall. The unlikely quartet headed back to the front entrance, and Dante pressed himself against the wall to peek out the window and make sure they were alone. There was no movement outside, not even a zombie, and the hair on the back of his neck stood up. See anything? Ace asked. He shook his head. No, but I have a bad feeling, he admitted. Let's go, Brand demanded. If they didn't see you come in here, they don't know you're here. Let's get the fuck out so we can go our own way. Dante nodded reluctantly, peering around once again just to be sure. He opened the door slowly, inch by inch, and then slipped out, head on a swivel to scan the area for enemies. But it seemed that the sheriff was right for once, and they were in the clear. He waved for Ace to follow, and the other three filed out into the parking lot. They hadn't gotten three steps before a gunshot cracked, and a bullet buried itself into Henson's head, dropping him to the ground. The remaining trio dove behind a police car as bullets pinged off of the building, and Dante cursed under his breath. I fucking told you. He wanted to scream at the sheriff. I told you they'd kill you on sight, and I told you that I had a bad feeling. But it was no use and wouldn't do any good in their situation. Where are they coming from? Ace asked, as he tried to peer up through a window, but only succeeded in ducking as glass shattered above their heads. Dante shook his head. Too far away to take out with a damn shotgun, he said. They looked left and right, hoping that there would be cover to get them to better cover. But the row of cars ended, and there was nothing but open parking lot. The roar of an engine approached, and a black SUV came screaming into the lot, somebody hanging out of the window with an assault rifle. Dante popped up and fired, ducking back down quickly without waiting to see what he'd hit. By the sound of shattering glass, he'd hit the vehicle, and with no return fire, he hoped that meant that he caught the gunman with the blast. What did you morons do to these guys? Brandt barked. Just tried to breathe the same air, Dante grunted, and at the sound of a car door opening, he popped up again. This time, Ace jumped up with him and they fired quickly on the vehicle. Somebody screamed, and more glass shattered. Dante reloaded and peered around the hood of their cover car, and spotted a mercenary running over from the trees, skidding behind the SUV. He aimed the shotgun, waiting for a head to pop up. But there was nothing but the sound of low voices hissing. He fired at the closest tire, blasting it to shreds. A black blur popped up over the hood and fired on him. When his attacker ducked down, they heard footsteps and moans, and Ace cursed under his breath. A loud-ass gunfight in the middle of the zombie apocalypse, he muttered. Great fucking idea. Dante pulled out his handgun as the footsteps got closer. This could work to our advantage, he said quietly. Just have to be careful. As he'd anticipated, panic fire erupted from behind the SUV as the remaining mercenaries fired on the approaching zombies. Dante peeked up over the hood, and was simultaneously thankful and filled with dread at the twenty-strong horde descending on their enemies. A few fell, but the rest swarmed a limping soldier, sending the last one tearing off towards town, leaving his brother to die screaming. He put a finger to his lips, signalling to Ace and Brandt to stay quiet. And thankfully the ghouls took off after the other mercenary once they were done with their meal. Let's get the fuck out of here, Brandt finally hissed, eyes wide. Dante shook his head. No, we need to take out the rest of these mercs, he said. Fuck that, the sheriff growled. We need to get away from those things. Who knows how many are in town? If they get back to QXR and report that we're here, this whole area is going to be crawling with mercenaries, Dante argued. 
We need to take them out. Brandt shook his head. Then let's get out of the area, he snapped. And go where? Ace demanded. Survival of this thing is going to count on sustainability, Dante added. We can't just pack up and leave. He took a deep breath. Listen, if you stay and help us, I have a safe place you can go. Ace opened his mouth to argue, but Dante put up a hand. The family we met at the hardware store, he said, and the redneck contemplated a moment, finally nodding. We can get him to them. They're out of the way enough. Brandt threw his hands up. What family? Let's just go there now. I'm not going to tell you where they are until you help us get rid of these assholes, Dante said firmly. The sheriff scowled. Fine, he snapped. What's the plan, then? Chapter 5 There was a low moan from the road, and Ace dashed out from behind the police car, drawing his pocket knife. Before the dead mercenary could fully reanimate, he stabbed it in the head. He looked around, and his heart pounded at the sound of moans rising up nearby. Dante was the first to spot them, seeing ghouls come around the corner of the station into the parking lot. Brandt fired at them, and the blast hit a zombie in the chest, shredding it, but not slowing it down. He turned tail and ran, despite Dante's cry of warning. But it didn't matter anyway, because more zombies came around the other side of the building. Back inside, the sheriff screamed, running for the door. Ace lashed out, grabbing his arm and stopping him. If we go in there, we're stuck there. They'll swarm the door. Safer than out here, Brandt argued, jerking his arm away. Dante clambered up onto the hood of one of the cars, making it up onto the roof. You can't be fucking serious, Brandt cried, and Ace shook his head. Suit yourself, then. But we're not saving your ass a second time, the redneck drawled, and jumped up on top of his own police car. The sheriff waffled for another second, but the zombies were coming fast. Instead of climbing up on a car, he ran for the SUV, diving inside. The tires are flat, idiot, Ace called, but Brent didn't get into the driver's seat, instead opting to pop up out of the sunroof. He gave Ace the finger apparently unappreciative of the idiot moniker. Dante drew his knife, stabbing at one of the ghouls smacking the side of the car he stood atop. There were enough zombies that the vehicle wobbled beneath him, but he was confident at least that it wouldn't topple over. He hoped. Try not to waste bullets, he called over his shoulder. We also don't want to make too much noise and attract too many of these things. Brandt scoffed. As if there aren't already too many, he demanded. Looks like we'll be saving your ass for a second time, Ace muttered, realizing that if the sheriff couldn't shoot, he wouldn't be able to reach any heads from the sunroof, unless he hung out one of the windows. But somehow the redneck didn't foresee that happening. He wasn't even sure if he had a blade anyway, since they'd only suited up he and Henson with vests and shotguns. Should have grabbed Henson's gun, he said, dawning on him they could use the extra weapon. Dante shook his head as he stabbed another zombie. We'll get it after, he replied. After what? Ace asked, sighing at the sheer number of ghouls surrounding them. This is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Me too, Dante admitted. But we're here now. He continued to stab, as did Ace but soon another problem arose. As corpses fell around the vehicles, the zombies got taller from being able to stand atop their dead brethren. We're gonna have to move, Ace said, pursing his lips as he assessed the situation. The last eye socket he'd buried his knife into had gotten him an arm swipe that was far too close for comfort. Any room on the other side to jump down the row of cars? Dante asked, turning around to face him. Gonna have to be, Ace replied, taking a deep breath. He raised his leg and kicked a zombie in the chest, slamming it into a few of its friends. Before he could second-guess himself, he leapt for the next car. It wasn't a large gap, 
only a few feet, but from one slick car roof to another, it seemed more precarious than it should be. When he hit the fiberglass on the other side, Ace's life flashed before his eyes as his shoes slid on the smooth, rounded surface. He vaguely heard Dante yelling for him, but all he could concentrate on was staying on top of the car, staying alive. He managed to keep a hold of his knife, miraculously, scrabbling as he slid down the windshield on his belly. A rotted hand grabbed his ankle and he kicked and flailed, hands squeaking against the car as he struggled to get back up on top. There was a hard thump as Dante landed on the roof, the vehicle bowing under the impact. He grabbed Ace's arm and heaved, dragging his body up on top of the car. The zombie came with him, but at least its mouth wasn't within biting distance, and Dante fired once with his handgun to end the creature. Ace disengaged the ghoul's grip and got to his feet carefully, the two of them standing back to back on the car. We should be able to take the last of them out from this one, but if not, we'll make the jump down the next two, Dante said, as the redneck nodded. Thanks, man, he said. Any time, Dante replied, and then swung down, stabbing a zombie. Ace followed suit, vigor renewed after his adrenaline fueled near death, and soon there were only three zombies left, struggling to clamber over their fallen pack. Dante bent his knees and then jumped, his feet hitting the lead one in the chest, knocking it back into its companions. Ace slid down the back of the car and joined him in lunging down to stab the zombies before they could struggle to their feet. Once finished, the two men stood and admired their pile of bodies, more than a little shell-shocked at how the whole thing had gone down. At the sound of a door slamming, they turned towards Brant, who was shaking his head, face pale. We gotta get out of here, he said. Ace rolled his eyes. Plans don't change just because a few zombies show up, he drawled. We still gotta take out those QXR assholes. Did the one that reanimated have his gun on him? Dante asked, inclining his head to the SUV. They took it. Ace replied, shaking his head. We're going back into town, then? The larger man nodded. We'll have to get to the bike, once we take care of these guys, he suggested. Good call, Ace agreed, and pocketed his knife, keeping his shotgun at the ready. As the trio came up to the main road, the sound of squealing tires rose in the air, and they pressed themselves against a building on the corner. A bullet exploded the brick above their heads, and they ducked and dove. Brant and Ace lunged behind a dumpster, while Dante darted around the corner. He spotted an SUV skidding out, having spotted him, and in the process of turning around. He ran full tilt across the road and ran into an alleyway, coming face to face with a pack of five zombies. They shrieked when they spotted him, but he didn't let it phase him simply dropped his shoulder and took a run. He slammed into the first ghoul's torso, pushing off of the ground so that it flew back into its brethren. He fired twice, hitting one in the face and another in the throat, and then ran over top of them, using a chest as a stepping stone to leap clear of the writhing group. Once on the other side, he tore down the alley and hung a right, skidding at the sight of a thick copse of corpses. He darted to the right and clambered up on top of a closed dumpster, just as more shots rang out. Can't catch a fucking break, he thought as he whipped around, aiming behind him. There was a blur of black as a mercenary ducked behind a building on the far end. Zombies swarmed the dumpster, reaching up and attempting to grab his ankles. He didn't like how out in the open he was, but it couldn't be helped at this point. If his opponent fired enough times, he hoped that the ghouls would go that way, but he couldn't count on it. As soon as a head popped out from around the corner, he fired, missing, but sending the mercenary back behind cover. He chanced looking around to find a way out of his predicament and spotted a ladder across the alley that led up to the roof of one of the main road buildings. He glanced back towards the mercenary, waiting for him to come back. He didn't often commiserate on missing an eye, but this was one of those moments when he wished he had more peripheral vision, so he could calculate the odds of his jump while also keeping watch on his enemy. More gunfire echoed from the road, 
and he hoped that Ace was okay if he was fighting the rest of the QXR goons that had skidded up the main road. A head popped out from the corner, and he fired again, loath to waste the bullets considering the distance, but it covered him enough that he made the snap decision to make the jump. He backed up against the wall and took a deep breath, running and pushing as hard as he could off of the edge of the dumpster. A three-round burst whizzed past him, one narrowly missing his nose as he flew through the air. He didn't flinch for fear of missing the ladder and managed to grab onto a rung with one hand. He maniacally shoved his gun in the back of his pants, next to the shotgun that was slipping down his pant leg and making it difficult to climb. He quickly gripped the rungs as another three-round burst came his way, and he hooked a foot up as high as he could. Something gripped his other ankle, and he kicked wildly, booting a zombie in the face. A few ghouls from the pack tore off in the direction of the gunman, and the mercenary focused his fire on them, giving Dante an opening to try to dislodge his leg without worrying about being shot. He finally managed to disengage the rotted arm, and hauled himself up the ladder as fast as he could. The zombies quickly lost interest in him as the mercenary continued to fire, and Dante made it to the roof. He ran across as fast as he could, heart pounding at his series of near deaths, and crouched when he reached the front edge. There was more gunfire in the street, and he peered over the edge. The SUV had been abandoned, and four mercenaries stalked towards an alley, across the street where, presumably, Ace and Brandt were. Dante took aim with his handgun, carefully focusing on the head of one of the guys in the back of the quartet. He fired and managed to clip his target in the shoulder, and the entire pack whipped around. Before he could aim again, one of them spotted him. The roof! the mercenary screamed, and all three not injured pointed their assault rifles at him. He jerked back from the edge as bullets peppered the tip of the building. Hopefully, he'd given Ace and Brandt enough of an opening to regroup. He crawled away from the edge and then stood up into a crouch, heading down the row of buildings. The downtown core was a strip of buildings, so the roofs all connected. And he was hoping he could find a way down in a strategic space. The shotgun wasn't going to do well at long range, what would be ideal would be to grab a fallen mercenary's assault rifle. He skidded to a stop and changed directions, heading back towards the building where the soldier had been firing at him, while he was on the dumpster. He had to hop the alley that he'd run down when he was outrunning the SUV, but it wasn't too big of a gap, and then he crouched, creeping to the edge of the building. He heard moans, but no gunfire and looked down to see them feasting on the mercenary. While he was happy the ghouls were doing his job for him, it would be difficult getting a gun off of a fresh zombie. Some of them were slowing down, it seemed, but the newly reanimated ones were at full steam. Dante shook his head and then moved to the front of the building, taking stock of what the other four were up to. Nobody was on the main road, save for a few ghouls tearing across the street to the alley the mercenaries had been fighting with. He looked down at a series of metal bars holding the sign out front of the building and spotted a busted sedan beneath it on the sidewalk. Dante hooked his legs over the side of the roof, balancing on one of the bars and testing its sturdiness. Satisfied, he crouched and wrapped his hands around it, lowering his feet to one of the bottom ones. He managed to climb down and hang, with only a few feet between his boots and the sedan. He dropped down, but as soon as his boots clanged on the car, moans erupted, and zombies swarmed from around the building. Dante pushed off of the car, sliding down to the road and pumping his legs. The shotgun clattered to the ground behind him, but he left it, glancing over his shoulder at the horde of ghouls chasing him. He made sure the handgun was secure as he ran, and dove through an open door, pulling it shut behind him. He threw the deadbolt, wincing as the body slamming into it on the other side made it groan. As he turned around to sweep whatever store he'd ended up in, a body slammed into him. It didn't smell like death, only blood, and the angry guns that came from its mouth told him it was a live human, not a zombie. 
I'm going to skin you alive, pretty boy, the mercenary snarled, his fist connecting with Dante's face. When he regained himself from the surprise of the attack, Dante wedged his knee up between them, pushing hard against the soldier's gut. He scrambled to draw his knife, but he couldn't reach down, so settled on gripping the man's throat. They tussled on the ground for a few moments until the mercenary managed to jab Dante into the side enough times to wind him. His grip loosened on his attacker's neck, allowing an opening for another brutal blow to his face. He swung wildly and gave a great heave with his knee, managing to connect with his attacker's ear and throw him off. As he gasped for breath, he managed to draw his knife backing up enough to regain his senses before they met again. The mercenary didn't waste time, throwing himself back towards Dante, who raised his blade at just the right time to drive it into flesh. He didn't hit a vital organ, unfortunately, but buried it deep enough into the man's shoulder that it distracted him with a scream of pain. Dante twisted the knife and then drew it quickly, shoving the mercenary back and then slashing across his throat. As his opponent gurgled and choked, he stabbed him through the eye socket, not wanting to take a chance that he'd been bitten. The mercenary's lifeless body crumpled, and the door began to buckle beneath the weight of the ghouls outside. Dante rushed for the back of the store, now realising it was full of candy. He had the vague thought that under different circumstances, he would have loved to collect up some watermelon gummies for Grace, and then marvelled at how random his thought process could be in times of stress. He found the back door just as the front began to crack under the pressure and inched it open. He spotted one lone zombie a few feet away and didn't hear any gunfire. The sound of glass and wood shattering from the front of the store spurred him on, and he burst into the alleyway. Lunging to bury his knife into the back of the ghoul's head, gunfire cracked in the distance, and he hopped the fallen corpse, running down the alleyway to try to find his companions. Chapter 6 As Dante took off into the town, Ace tried to find the source of their shooter. Gunfire followed Dante, and the redneck smacked Brant's shoulder. Come on, let's go around back to the next alley over and flank him, he hissed, and then took off at a run, not waiting to see if the sheriff followed. He did, however, and they tore around the back of the building, stopping at the corner to the alley to peek around. He caught sight of the glint of an SUV and the back of a mercenary's head. Ace headed down the alleyway, aiming his shotgun as he got closer and closer, hoping to get close enough to fire at a useful range. Halfway down the alley, the mercenary turned around and raised his assault rifle. Ace fired despite being too far away and then ducked behind a cluster of trash cans to take cover from the return fire. Down here! the mercenary yelled. Brandt ran towards Ace, eyes panicked, and then did a baseball slide to join him behind the cans. A pack of ghouls was on his tail, pouring into the alley from the back. Shit, Ace said brightly. They were boxed in, flesh-eating corpses on one side, a quartet of crazed soldiers on the other. He looked up over the top of the cans, narrowly missing more bullets, and spotted a metal door just on the other side, across the alley. We gotta get in that building, he said. How the fuck are we gonna do that? Brandt barked and fired his shotgun into the oncoming horde. He blew apart the top half of one ghoul, tripping up a few behind it. Ace popped up as the assault rifle burst stopped and fired at the mercenaries, who took cover around the corners of the mouth of the alley. He fired again, darting for the door and pulled on it, willing it to be unlocked. Thankfully, it was, and he opened it towards the mercenaries, using it as a shield as Brandt ran towards him. They slipped inside just as the zombies reached them, managing to pull it shut just in time. Moans echoed from behind them in the storeroom they'd entered, and both men whipped around. Lock the door, Ace cried, before blowing a zombie's head off. Brandt scrambled to lock the door and then grunted as a ghoul lunged for him. They tussled for a moment before he finally kicked the corpse away, raising his shotgun fast enough to blast it in the head, splattering brains everywhere. 
Ace, needing to reload but without time, used the butt of his gun to smash a zombie in the face, and then clambered on top of a large wooden crate as the ghoul struggled to get to its feet again. He pulled out his knife and began to stab down like whack-a-mole, dropping zombies left and right. Soon there was a pile of corpses around the crate and the sheriff stood, chest heaving, across the room. Both men stood there, waiting, listening hard, which was difficult with the banging on the door. Front or back? Brandt asked hoarsely, and Ace jumped down from the crate. If they're heading towards the back, I say we go out the front and try to get them from behind, the redneck said, and headed for the store. They came out from the back room into a gift shop, wall to wall with kitschy overpriced items. When they reached the front, they peered out of the large glass window, and it immediately shattered with gunfire. Ace hit the floor, and Brandt rolled around, pressing his back into the wall next to the window frame. Hey! the sheriff screamed. I'll come out! Don't shoot me! One of the mercenaries laughed. Yeah, come on out, piggy! he called in a sing-song voice, followed by a chorus of snorting. I'm not with these assholes! Brandt cried, and Ace's gaze darkened. I'll even help you take him out. Idiot, the redneck muttered under his breath, staying on the floor as Brandt stepped into the window. The mercenaries immediately opened fire again, and a bullet caught the sheriff in the arm. He grunted and dove back behind cover. God damn it, he cried, incredulity in his voice. Ace was torn between being angry at him and amused that his selfishness had gotten him shot. How many times do we have to tell you, these guys ain't fucking around before you believe us? He asked, shaking his head. He peeked up a little, seeing all four mercenaries out front, walking slowly with their guns aimed towards the store. He began to crawl along the floor, back towards the storeroom, and Brandt hissed, but followed him. We gotta beat him to the back door, Ace grunted as he got to his feet. That is, if you still want to get out of this alive. The sheriff simply huffed in response, and followed him through the back storeroom. They ran past the side door that still had thumping on it, and inched open the back door. The alley was clear, with a pack of thirty or so ghouls headed their way from the far end. They're going out the back, one of the mercenaries cried from inside the store, and Ace leapt into the alley. Brandt fired towards the inside, backing out next to Ace. Let's go, he cried, but the redneck shook his head. Let's keep them pinned down until those zombies get here, he said, inclining his head towards the oncoming horde. Find something to jam in the door so they can get in. Are you crazy? the sheriff demanded. Ace simply grinned. Don't you know that by now? he asked and motioned to a pile of chunks of wood next to a trash can. He fired his shotgun into the warehouse again, and then ducked behind the door to avoid an onslaught of bullets. They're outside! Somebody yelled from inside. We can't get around back! Somebody else called back. That's it! Ace cooed quietly, as he reloaded the shotgun. There's only one way out, and it's through here, boys. Brant rushed over groaning at the pain in his wounded arm as he knelt down to shove a chunk of wood into the seam of the door. Ace let it go, and it closed a bit, staying about a foot open. Let's go, the sheriff said, hopping from foot to foot as the zombies grew closer. Ace shook his head. One more, he said, and fired into the warehouse again to keep the mercenaries pinned and interested. When the ghouls were about ten yards away, he poked his head into the doorway, and the mercenaries fired, three round bursts peppering the door. Ace jerked away and tore off with Brandt, leaving the ghouls to pour into the warehouse, drawn by the sound of the gunfire. Screams erupted from inside, but they didn't look back, running away from the carnage to what they hoped was safety. Chapter 7 Dante peeked around a corner, spotting a lone SUV in the middle of the road. Two mercenaries backed up against it, aiming at a storefront with shattered windows. 
By the look of the limp corpses hanging over the sills, it looked like they'd just fought their way out of a massacre. He hoped to hell that Ace wasn't a body in that massacre. But by the way the mercenaries seemed to be on guard, he hoped it was because they were still expecting resistance. We should go, one of them said shakily. The other shook his head. Bob's got the keys, man, he replied, receiving a grunt of frustration in return. We just gotta guard the car till he gets back. What if he's already dead? The first one asked. I don't know, man, the second one admitted. Dante quietly checked his mag, sighing when he found only one bullet left. With his knife in his left hand, he used his wrist to steady the gun with his right, taking careful aim at the closest one's head. After a silent countdown from three, he fired, his bullet finding its mark into the back of the mercenary's head. The other one reacted with shock, but didn't raise his gun fast enough before Dante was on him. He used his assault rifle to block the knife strike, and they wrestled for a moment before their tussle resulted in both weapons flying to the side and clattering against the ground. Rather than die for them, Dante launched himself on top of the man, shoving him back into the hood of the SUV. The soldier managed to get a good hit to his face, but he'd had enough of those that day, and grabbed a fistful of the mercenary's hair, slamming his head down into the hood of the vehicle. As his skull pinged off of the fiberglass, Dante kneed him in the stomach, knocking the wind out of him. Before he could lunge down with an elbow strike, the mercenary slammed into him, knocking them both back to the ground. Blows rained down on Dante, and he finally managed to shove him over, rolling them and ending up on top. He wedged his forearm into the soldier's throat, holding him down and pinning his body. The mercenary gasped for air as Dante crushed his trachea, his arms flailing, but Dante didn't let up, taking every hit as they grew weaker and weaker. After the soldier fell limp, he got off of him and retrieved the assault rifle and the knife. He switched the gun to single burst mode and put a bullet in the soldier's head. Dante wheezed as he looked around, making sure no zombies had come running towards the noise. As he caught his breath, he stabbed each tire of the SUV for good measure, just in case Bob was still alive and coming back with the keys. Wiping a touch of blood from his face, he took off at a slow jog towards the area where they'd left the bike, hoping that Ace would be there. When he rounded the corner, the redneck was there, with Brandt, who had a strip of fabric crudely tied around his arm, soaked with blood. Dante! Ace exclaimed letting out a whoosh of breath. Thank fuck! I was really not looking forward to my sister beating the shit out of me for letting you die. Dante rolled his eyes. My life is not in your hands, man, he said, and clapped Ace on the shoulder. Glad you made it. Any more mercs lurking about, do you think? The redneck shrugged. We trapped four of them in a store with a bunch of zombies, so I don't think they'll be making it out. Even if they do... I slashed the tires on their last SUV, Dante replied. Ace nodded. Good call, good call, he said. I think we're good. I haven't heard any gunshots in a while. If any of them are still around, I don't think they'll get very far. You look a little worse for wear, man. You okay? I've had worse, Dante said with a half smile. Not a scratch on you, though. Thanks for caring that I've been shot, Brandt piped up. Dante raised his eyebrow. What happened? he asked. Finally piss off Ace enough? He tried to sell me out to QXR, the redneck announced, stifling an amused smile. But they shot him instead. Dante shook his head. Guess that's the price you pay for not listening to us, he said with a shrug. And after we offered you a safe place, too. There's no way you were actually going to bring me to a safe place, the sheriff snapped clenching his jaw. Moans rose in the distance, and Dante looked past him, spotting ghouls down the street, pouring out of an alleyway and heading towards them. Ace lifted the bike, securing his weapons to him and kick-starting it. We were, Dante said, refocusing on the red-faced sheriff. But now you'll never know. He hopped on the back of the bike. Wait! 
Brandt cried, staggering towards them. You can't leave me here. Please. Shouldn't have tried to sell me out, Ace snapped, and then hit the throttle, leaving him in a cloud of smoke, unable to aim his shotgun at them. They sped to the main road, and then the redneck skidded to a stop around the corner. The route they wanted was crawling with zombies, and they all turned at the same time, mouths opening in excitement. Fuck, the redneck declared. Ideas? How much gas we got? Dante asked. Not enough to get to the next station, Ace replied. I need the one on the other side of that pack. Well, let's lead them away then. Dante suggested. Head the other way. Ace pulled a U-turn, and as they passed back through the intersection, they spotted Brandt firing into the horde, to no avail as it overwhelmed him. Good fucking riddance, Ace muttered, and they sped down the street. The side streets had packs of zombies down them, clustered enough that they wouldn't be easy to navigate around. He kept going straight, but they were both worried about the gas running out before they could loop back around. They stopped at another intersection with lights, and the left side was fairly clear. There were two ghouls aimlessly wandering in the distance, easily avoided when the time came. Ace idled for a moment, letting the pursuing zombies catch up a bit, so they didn't lose them. They'd need enough time to outrun them, and then also fill the gas tank before tearing out of town. When the front of the horde was about ten yards away, Ace hit the throttle and zoomed for about a quarter mile before the engine sputtered. Fuck! he barked, and they began to slow down. Get off and push, Dante cried, and hopped off of the vehicle. We're fucked if we leave it behind. No shit, Ace quipped, and they ran, both hands on the bike as they rolled it along with them. Take the next street, not the alley. Dante suggested. We don't want to get caught in a bottleneck. The redneck nodded, and they ran at a good clip towards the next road. The zombies kept pace with them, thankfully not as fast as their early days sprinting. However, as they made the turn, the sound of rapid bootfalls grew closer. The duo looked over their shoulders, and Ace rolled his eyes. This fucker just won't quit, he muttered. A zombified Sheriff Brent, fresh off the zombie press, sprinted towards them, milky eyes and huge chunks of his flesh hanging from his body. Dante raised the assault rifle as they ran, and when the zombie was a few feet away, he loosed a bullet into its forehead. Gone for good this time, he declared. Ace nodded, smirking. Francis and Maddox will be happy with this story, he said. Over the moon. Dante agreed, and his legs began to protest as they ran. It had been an exhausting day, and at this point he was running on pure adrenaline. So, how are we going to fill the gas tank? The redneck grimaced. I was hoping you had some thoughts about that, he huffed, because I got nothing. Well, Dante began, and then sighed. I've got this, he said, holding up the assault rifle. Makes a lot of noise. Ace raised an eyebrow. You saying you draw them away while I fill the tank and then I come and pick you up? He asked. Or you could draw them away while I fill the tank. Dante joked. That would be cool too. The redneck chuckled through his heavy breaths. I'm good, man. I'll take one for the team and be the gas bitch. Suit yourself, Dante replied. He spotted the building up ahead where he'd climbed down on top of the sedan and pointed to it. I'll get up on top of that building and draw the horde back down to the other end of the road from the roof. You gas up and then meet me back under that sign. Gotcha, Ace agreed, and they nodded to each other before Dante broke off and ran for the busted car. He clambered up on top of the roof and crouched, leaping up as high as he could to grab the metal bars. He pulled himself up with a grunt, hooking a leg up on one of the bars to propel himself to the top. The ghouls were almost at his position, and he wanted to make sure he kept their attention so Ace could get away. As soon as he clambered up onto the roof, he pulled the assault rifle from his pack and fired into the horde. A few zombies fell, and the rest poured towards him, smacking into the building, confused. 
Yeah, come party with me, you dead fucks, he bellowed, and started walking along the roofs of the stores. He hopped the first alleyway, and then fired again, taking out a few more zombies and drawing the horde after him. He continued to hoot and holler and yell, loosing a few bullets every so often as he walked to the other end. Hurry back, Ace, he murmured, hoping that the redneck wouldn't run into any trouble at the gas station. Chapter 8 Ace jogged up to the gas station, pocket knife in his fist, looking around everywhere in case of any friends trying to surprise him and eat his face. If he were being totally honest, he was more worried about stray mercenaries, even though after his mental count, he was sure that they'd gotten them all. He could still hear the crack of Dante's gunfire in the distance, so he was sure that any zombies wandering around would be more apt to go in that direction. He reached the first pump and hit the kickstand, unscrewing the cap for the tank as fast as he could. He grabbed the pump and stuck it in the tank and pulled the handle. Nothing. Fuck, he muttered. Was the pump empty? He looked at the screen and saw an error message saying to go speak to an attendant. An attendant that wants to chew on my brains, great. He looked back and forth and then sprinted for the gas bar. The front door hung open, and he did a quick sweep of the store, finding it empty. He skirted the counter and checked the panel for the gas pumps, pushing all the buttons until the cash register gave a ding. With the lights all green, he assumed that the gas would be flowing, so he burst back outside and sprinted for the bike. This time, when he pulled the handle, gasoline began to pump into the tank, and he let out a sigh of relief. At least it didn't want a credit card, he muttered, and then chuckled under his breath, shaking his head. Once full, he turned and replaced the pump, and then a rotted hand narrowly missed his face. Jesus, fuck, he cried, at high enough of a pitch that he was glad nobody was around to hear it. He ducked and dove around the pump, out of the reach of the excited zombie that had come out of nowhere. He stabbed through the pillars at the pump, but the ghoul was fast enough that it passed his arm, staggering around to get to him. He kicked it in the chest, sending it stumbling back into the windshield washing station, the squeegee knocking loose and splattering brown water everywhere. Ace took his opening and lunged forward, burying the knife into the zombie's eye socket. As soon as it fell limp, he whipped around. He had to be fast. Dante was waiting on him. But he didn't want to start up the bike and make a bunch of noise. He quickly replaced the cap on the gas tank and steered the bike around, running as fast as he could with the rolling vehicle alongside him. When he reached the main road, he heard Dante yelling instead of shooting and assumed he'd either run out of bullets or decided to conserve them. He spotted his companion on the roof at the end of the row, waving his arms and jumping up and down. It was an almost comical sight, and he filed it away to describe to Lily later. There were no ghouls in sight, so he chanced walking out into the street with the bike, trying to figure out how he was going to get Dante's attention without making a sound. Thankfully, his companion seemed to spot him, because he waved. Now, how to get him over here? Ace wondered. But it seemed Dante had that covered as well. He fired a few times into the crowd and then ducked down, so that he was out of sight. Ace spotted him coming into view on the back side of the row of buildings, running across the roof. He wheeled the bike over to the broken sedan and got on it, ready to kick start as soon as Dante was down. As soon as the man's boots hit the roof of the car, the zombies began to trickle their way. Ace hit the starter, and Dante jumped onto the back, wrapping an arm around his waist. The redneck chuckled and hit the throttle, speeding them out of town. Both men seemed afraid to let out sighs of relief, but as they left their harrowing day in the dust, they felt lighter and lighter. There was just the hope that QXR wouldn't come knocking. At least, if they did, they'd find them here, and not right on top of Ace's house and the little community they'd begun to build for themselves. The redneck went straight to Maddox's and punched in the code for the gate. Where is everyone? Dante asked, getting off of the back of the bike, brow furrowed. There were no signs of struggle. 
but it unsettled him how quiet it was. Ace hit the kickstand and wandered up to the trailer, finding a little yellow sticky note attached to the door. Gun to the farm, he read out loud and shook his head. You okay riding bitch a little bit longer? Dante laughed, shaking his head. You mean I get the pleasure of hugging you for another leg of the trip? He pretended to flip imaginary hair over his shoulder. Sign me up. Chapter 9 As the bike rumbled up towards the abandoned school, Lily emerged from the gymnasium door, flanked by Cam and Bailey. She put her hands on her hips, giving the men a stern look like an angry mum. About time you boys got back, she scolded, but couldn't keep the smile out of her voice. Ace rolled his eyes. Don't even pretend like you missed me, Lil, he drawled. I didn't miss you at all, she teased, and then her gaze softened when she noticed how rough around the edges Dante looked. What happened? He stepped up to her and brushed some stray hair back from her face, gazing down at her with a big smile. Lots, but I'm fine. Well, I can see that, you big oaf, she shot back. But her voice lacked any venom as she grinned goofily up at him. Cam gaped at them and then turned to Ace, eyes wide. About time, right? The redneck drawled and clapped the younger man on the back, leading him back inside. Bailey blushed crimson and trotted after them, brushing past Cam to be first back into the gym. Dante looped an arm around Lily's shoulders, pressing a soft kiss to the top of her head as they headed inside. Fine, but needs his woman to hold him up. I see how it is, she joked as she slid her arm around his waist, and he pretended to lean on her. She poked him in the side and he left, easing up on her shoulders. I could clean up, he said, looking around. The gym wasn't exactly a hive of activity given their low population, but work had definitely been done. There were raised garden beds everywhere, with neat little rows. Henry and Tate sat on the far end at a set of desks someone had pulled together, sharing a giant bong as they leaned over some papers. Over here, Lily said, waving for him to come to the right. There was a long hose coming out of one of the change rooms, and it hung over the side of a large plastic tub. The nozzle attached to it had varying sprays, and there was a stack of towels stacked neatly next to it. Need a shower? she asked, with a sly wink, squeezing the handle and spraying in a sprinkler pattern. He chuckled low in his throat. Maybe later, he replied, heat blooming in his belly at her insinuation. He stuck his hands in the tub and let her spray him down, and then wet a towel to wipe the blood from his face. There he is, Lily said as he dried himself off. Want the grand tour? He raised his eyebrow. Is there more? No, she said, and trilled a laugh. This is it. I'm glad you all made it out okay, he said, lowering his head. Did you run into any trouble at all? She shook her head. No, we had a clean getaway, she crossed her arms. Now, tell me what happened to you, mister. No fucking way, Maddox exclaimed, his laugh booming across the space as he doubled over. I think Ace is already regaling everyone with our tail, Dante said with a chuckle, and took her hand, leading her over to the others clustered near Tate and Henry. Ace wiped pretend tears from his eyes. Yes way, he said, shaking his head. He was such a fucking dick. And then he tried to sell me out, so he left his ass. That's amazing, Maddox guffawed, and slapped Francis on the back as the large man walked by, carrying a bucket of soil from outside. Did you hear that? They left Brant in the middle of a zombie-infested town. That's not even the best part, Dante cut in with a smirk. Ace grinned. He caught up to us later, all zombified. No. Maddox declared, raising his hands. Tell me you shot that fucker in the face. At Ace's nod, the other redneck whooped, doing a little jig. Lily rolled her eyes, glancing over at Abigail and her daughters, 
who were off to the side, thankfully occupied. What were you doing back at the prison, anyway? Tate piped up, turning towards them with bright red eyes. Ace shook his head. We needed wheels, and this guy thought it would be a bright idea to snag a cup car. He said, jerking a thumb at Dante. Which we weren't even able to get anyway. We also needed some gear to fight the QXR, but of course the supply room had a keypad with a number code. Oh, of course, Maddox moaned. Also, thanks for tossing the keys to his cell in the toilet, asshole, Ace added, staring at Maddox with disdain. I lost rock, paper, scissors and had to fish him out. Ew, Tate cried, wrinkling his nose. Thankfully, there was no shit in there, Ace said, but still glared at Maddox. Y'all are disgusting, Lily quipped, shaking her head. Anyway, did you take out all of those QXR guys, or are we going to have problems? Dante shrugged. By our count, we're pretty sure we got them all, he said. And we slashed all of their tires, so even if there are any left, they won't be going anywhere by car. But we left a lot of hungry zombies downtown, so it doesn't look good for any survivors. What if somebody comes looking for their friends? Henry asked, his words slow and sluggish. I mean, won't somebody come looking for them? Dante shrugged again. Honestly, I don't know, he admitted. They don't seem like the type of guys to really care if they lose anyone. But they might come investigating to see if there's resistance out here other than zombies. Not out here, though, Tate said. We're out of the way, and this place doesn't look like anything. Ace shook his head. Probably best to set up a watch anyway, he suggested. Just to be on the safe side. You two get to sleep tonight, Lily said firmly after the exciting day you've had. Her cousin stretched his arms above his head, cracking his back and shoulders. And you are right about that, cousin dear, he drawled. I could use some eats and a nap. Bailey jerked a thumb over her shoulder. We've got some stew going in the kitchen, she said. Come on. Lily hooked her arm through Dante's, and they followed the young woman down the hallway to the cafeteria. You guys got set up nice in here, he said, noting some of the classrooms cleared out with some sleeping bags and amenities set up, for having to leave so fast. Well, we weren't sure how long we were going to have to stay, and we wanted to make sure it was comfortable for the little ones, Lily said. It's pretty good what we managed to find in here, even with the building so old. I was amazed there was power, at least for the time being. Grabbing some camp stoves or something would be a good idea for the long term. Dante nodded. A generator would be ideal, he said. But I don't know if it would be a good idea to make that much noise. We don't want to attract a whole pile of those things. Speaking of, we're going to have to talk about defense, Ace piped up. It's all well and good to have doors that close, but if a bunch of zombies end up surrounding the building, that's just a pain in the ass. Lily nodded. Yes, she agreed, but first we eat. Bailey grabbed the pot from the kitchen and tipped it, pouring the thick stew into some disposable paper bowls. There's no washable stuff in here, she said. I found a couple of mugs, but we figured we might as well use these up first. Dante smiled at her as he took his bowl and grabbed a few plastic spoons from the condiments table. They were in plastic packaging, so thankfully, not as covered in dust as the rest of the stuff kicking around the area. The quartet sat down at one of the picnic table-style benches, and Dante tossed Ace a spoon. They dug into their stew like animals, and the girls shared a playfully disgusted look at their vigour. Once their bowls were clean, they smacked their lips in satisfaction. Hey, didn't you say you had a chocolate-covered granola bar? Dante asked, raising his eyebrow. Ace crossed his arms. Hey, just because you wasted yours on an asshole cop that died five seconds later doesn't mean you're entitled to mine, he said with playful haughtiness. But mine wasn't chocolate-covered, Dante shot back. It wasn't even one with little marshmallows in it. 
The humanity, Bailey exclaimed, and the four of them shared a laugh at her sarcastic outburst. Ace rolled his eyes and then pulled out the granola bar in question, tearing into it and breaking it in half. He offered the smaller half to Dante, who took it with a smile. They got up and headed back to the gym where everyone had filtered off to do their own thing. Abigail waved Bailey over, and she offered the others a smile before heading to spend time with her family. Dante stared out over the beginnings of their little farm, but his thoughts were elsewhere. He thought of his sister, trapped with those QXR assholes. What were they doing to her, or making her do? He clenched his jaw. He knew that he couldn't have done anything differently. He knew that he couldn't have saved her at the time, that she was too far away from him. He even had overcome his guilt in not staying with her, because he'd managed to get Bailey out. Had he stuck around, she would have been captured as well, and that would have been just one more person he couldn't save. Hey, Lily said quietly, and he looked down at her, snapping out of his trance. You okay? she asked. Dante looked to his left and realized that Ace had wandered off to talk to Francis, who was finally relaxing in the corner instead of hauling dirt. Just worried about Grace, he said, running a hand over his hair. I can't stop thinking about what could be happening to her right now. She squeezed his hand gently. That's a dangerous path, she said. You'll just drive yourself crazy with that thought process. Best to think about a plan of action. He nodded, smiling down at her. You're right. Shit. You're built like a brick house, and you admit I'm right? she said, putting a hand to her chest. I hit the jackpot. He laughed, and it felt good. They headed for the planning table, surrounded by their companions that grew stronger by the day. At least for now, Dante could have hope. The End Coming soon, the survivors in the Low Country face new threats as they continue to rebuild after the zombie apocalypse. Up next, the second month begins in the main Dead America series as a zombie horde a million strong marches towards El Paso in Dead America Creeping Death. <laughs>